Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. In our last video, we rebuilt the power supply of the Provid 5, and now we're ready to move on to uh, some of the more interesting boards uh, that are mounted to the upper half of the Provid 5. Today we're going to pull out all four of the remaining circuit boards to change all these remaining tantalum capacitors and electrolytic capacitors to test and change the battery and to replace a potentiometer that's uh, broken. The first board we're going to remove is board 4, which is this long board here. And this contains all the analog circuitry and has the rows of Curtis chips. Uh, so we're going to start by removing these two, disconnecting these two connectors here uh, to board 3, which is the CPU board. Then we're going to remove six screws here, 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 and here. Now the board will come free and we can lift it away. Next we're going to remove PCB3, which is this board here, which contains the CPU, the ROM, the memory, the battery, and all the digital stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the remaining connector here, which is to the uh, bender assembly. And uh, it's keyed, so you can't plug it in wrong, so you don't need to worry about marking it. And now we're going to remove six screws uh, here, 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 and here. With the screws removed, we can now gently pry this board out. There's some connectors on the back that hold it into the uh, PCB2, which is sitting behind it. So there we have uh, pulled those out. You can see there's a connector at the bottom and a connector at the, at the top. And we can set this board aside. Now I'm ready to remove board 2 and board 1, which have the pots. And uh, while I still have this raised up, I'm going to gently disconnect the uh, ribbon cable here for the key bed. Um, in fact, I'm actually just going to remove it, take it out of the way to make sure that it doesn't get damaged. To get the potentiometer boards off, we're going to have to remove all the knobs and then all the nuts that are underneath. With the caps off, now we have to remove all the nuts that are holding these pots to the panel. And we're going to use a half inch socket. And it needs to be a long enough socket that you can get it on there without damaging the, uh, the shaft. And uh, I like to just use the, the socket to make it just loose enough that then I can use my finger to take it the rest of the way. So I'm going to do this with all the pots. And now there's some screws uh, that are holding the board in from the bottom that we're going to remove. Uh, there's one here, one here, and I see one here. And with those screws out, the two pot boards can just gently be set down and we have access to them. The two pot boards are connected by a, a ribbon cable that is not disconnectable. Um, so when you take one out, you have to take the other one out. And again, we're taking this out to replace the tantalum capacitor on board 2 and the broken potentiometer on board 1. While I have these boards out, it's a great opportunity to do some cleaning. You can see there's tons of dust that's accumulated around these switches um, that get in the small openings of the uh, case. So I'm going to go clean these up uh, with denatured alcohol and a Q-tip, and I'll probably also um, clean with contact cleaner each of the switches. Um, so I'll spray some contact cleaner in and uh, exercise the switch a few times just to make sure that the, the contacts inside are, are clean as well. Here's all the dust and dirt that was caught on the outside of those push button switches. And you know, could we have gotten this keyboard booting up and making sound without having cleaned these switches? Yeah, probably. 
Uh, but this isn't about me being like a neat freak or a perfectionist. Um, you know, doing things like this, paying attention to, to little details, are going to make this keyboard run uh, more reliably and be more problem free. You know, in the in the years going forward. I mean, with all that dust there, uh, inevitably some of it will work its way into into the switches which aren't sealed. So when we see something wrong, like tons of dust near an opening to a part, you know, we, we should clean it um, rather than, than just ignoring the problem. Um, and it'll, it'll make the synthesizer more reliable down the road. Figured I'd show you at least the uh, cleaning of one of the switches. So I'm taking the bottle of contact cleaner and I'm squirting a little bit under the cap and then I'm going to exercise the push button a bunch of times to get the contacts all clean. And if I want, I can go through and, and clean up any of the, the dust and junk that got squirted out. The ones on this side have been cleaner than the ones on the other side. I had some pretty nasty stuff come out of the other switches when I cleaned them. One of them was actually uh, junked up so much that when I would push it, it wouldn't spring back. So it was a good thing that I went through and I cleaned all these switches because when I, otherwise when I would have got this back in the keyboard, I would have found out that I had a, a sticky switch and then I would have had to pull everything back out to clean it. And I'll also clean each of the potentiometers. There's a small opening in the back of the potentiometer that you can squirt contact cleaner in and then exercise the potentiometer knob back and forth um, and then flush it again um, just to clear any, any debris that might be in there. So I'll also real quickly show you how to clean these pots. Uh, these are the, the slats on the back that I mentioned um, provide uh, entrance for the contact cleaner. So I'm going to take the contact cleaner and I'm squirt it into these holes. And then I'm going to exercise the pot back and forth, full rotation, a whole bunch of times. And I'll give it another blast. And uh, just keep working this back and forth. And you can repeat the process a couple times um, to, to flush out all the, the junk that's in there. Since I actually have these boards off, there's another place I can get contact cleaner in on this side uh, that I wouldn't be able to get to if I had left the board in the keyboard and cleaned it from the back. So I cleaned all the pots and I wish there were some way I could let you feel things through the video, but I didn't think these pots were all that bad uh, until I started cleaning them. And uh, now they're just much, much smoother and uh, easier to turn, a lot freer turning than they were before. So again, I mean, that wasn't something that uh, would have kept the keyboard from working, um, but it is going to make a big difference in the enjoyability and playability of the instrument once we're all done with it. So I'll start by removing the single tantalum capacitor from board two that we're going to be removing and replacing. And next I'll remove the broken potentiometer and I'm actually going to desolder it from the component side of the board. Now I'll solder in my replacement pot. Unfortunately I had to scavenge one from the other Prophet 5 so I'm going to be looking for a source of replacement pots for the Prophet 5. If you know of any, please let me know. With the potentiometer changed and the uh, new capacitor installed, uh, the switches and the pots all cleaned, we're done with these two boards and I can put them back into the keyboard. So now we're moving on to board three, the digital board with the CPU and the ROM and all the other digital stuff. Uh, this is where the battery is as well. So we're going to start by testing the battery. The uh, positive side is on the left and the negative side is on the right. 
labeled here on the battery. And uh, with your multimeter in volts DC mode, you can go ahead and touch those terminals. And in this case, the battery is at zero volts. This battery is deader than a doornail. And we're going to replace it. First, I'll take the old battery off. And to minimize the soldering of uh, lithium batteries, I'm going to just snip the leads here. And I'll cut the old tie wrap off and remove the old battery. While I'm taking things off on this board, I'll also take off these tantalum capacitors. There's 10 tantalum capacitors. On this one, the original ones are all orange, so they're nice and easy to see. And I'll just go ahead and remove those, and then we'll put everything back. This one has a big glob of glue right near it, so I'm going to have to pull that off before I stick my desoldering tool there. And with that, I've removed the 10 capacitors that we're going to be changing. So now I'm going to start putting things back, and I'm going to start with the battery. I uh, desoldered the old leads for the battery. Uh, you could just solder the new battery to the old leads, but it, it, since it might actually disconnect as you're putting heat on it. I just figured it would be easier to uh, to clean it up. Uh, and paying attention to the polarity of the battery, so that it's very clearly marked plus on the circuit board and plus on the battery. I'm going to fold the tabs of the battery over like this. And then I'm going to set the battery down on the board and solder it into place. And then with the zip tie, I'll just go ahead and secure this down. Even though it's, it's pretty solidly in place, uh, since they have a hole there for it and they recommend it, that is what I'm going to do. And we just changed the battery. Now I'll place the capacitors that I'm putting in to replace the ones that I took out. And now I'll solder these capacitors into place. And with that, we have completed the work on board three. I'm still going to go over the board, make sure that there's no um, no obvious signs of problems like chips loose in their sockets, uh, burned up parts or, or the like. Um, visual inspection of the boards while you have them out of the keyboard can save a lot of time troubleshooting later. Uh, but with that we're going to move on to the next board. So now I'll move on to board 4 which is the analog board and I'll do the same visual inspection that I did to board 3. And uh, I did look this one over and nothing looked strange. Uh, or out of place. So I'm going to go ahead and remove 16 capacitors from this board. And here I've removed all the capacitors that I'm going to be changing. And uh, you may have noticed I was picking these little things off. Uh, these little white things are just little standoffs or spacers that were on the original capacitors. I'll just put them back where I took them from. Uh, I probably don't need to, but um, why not? Now I'm going to place the new components where the old ones came out. Uh, so I am going to start up here with this little one. And if you get capacitors, here's tip of the day. If you get capacitors on a, on a cut tape like this, uh, instead of trying to pull them out and then they have sticky stuff on the, on the leads, all you do is just cut it, cut it off. You can't rely then on the uh, long lead being the positive, uh, but 
I mean, it's very clearly marked, so uh, it's just, uh, just easier to do things that way. The capacitor that's going here is a bipolar capacitor, so even though it's electrolytic, uh, you can install it in either direction. So now I'm going to be installing some audio grade capacitors, and you can tell which ones are the audio grade capacitors because they're gold in my kit. So again, because this is a cut tape, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to cut them off. And then these had the little beads before, so I'm going to put the little beads back. The next row of capacitors also take an audio signal, so they're also going to be these gold capacitors, these gold audio grade capacitors, and they also have the standoffs installed. Now these remaining capacitors are non-audio grade capacitors, and uh, this 2.2 microfarad one is the last one with beads that I need to worry about. And now I'll solder all of these into place. And with that, we've completed the recap and the boards are ready to go back into the keyboard. Before I stick that uh, boards back in, uh, I'll show you a little pile of junk we pulled out in this video. We have a dead battery, a bunch of uh, ticking time bomb tantalum capacitors, a dried up electrolytic capacitor, and a broken pot that we changed. I've stuck all the boards back in and reconnected all the connectors. Don't forget to connect the keyboard. Uh, before you install circuit board 3 because that covers up the connector on board 2 below. So in this video we completed the recap of this keyboard. Uh, we changed all the remaining tantalum and electrolytic capacitors on the remaining four boards, the pot boards, the CPU board, and the analog board. We did the power supply of course in the previous video. We also uh, changed the broken potentiometer and checked and changed the battery. Now we're ready to fire the keyboard up and uh, see if we got lucky and the recap is all it took to bring this keyboard back to life. And we will be doing that in the next video. Um, in the next video we'll fire it up, see if it works, and if it doesn't, we'll get it working. Um, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel uh, so you don't miss the next part when it comes out. Uh, I have parts and uh, repair service for Profit Fives on my website, synthchaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.